It's like that, where uh, they only are looking for people who, who are free. You should look at, um, at them as, yeah, as an opportunity for leverage, you know. And, and as soon as you start getting paid by other people, you don't have to worry about them because, you know, they're not going to pay you anyway. And so that's good. The problem is when you're dealing with people who might eventually become long-term clients, because that means at some point you have, to, you have to go from saying, I'm working for free to now start paying me and start paying me a decent salary. You don't want to start at like uh, very few cents per word if you think you're worth, you know, if you have legal uh, experience and, and you know all the terms and all that, then I'm assuming you, you know how to do the translations correctly. And, um, and that's a difficult jump to make. It's not impossible and there, and there are many, and there are a couple ways to make it. I think I made a video on it too, but it's, um, it's still a difficult jump. So if you're able to separate the ones you work pro bono for now and then wait and then what, once you have the ratings or at least treat them separately, let's say, the ones you want as long-term clients and the other ones. Um, look, it's always a judgment call. And like you said, you were talking to a friend and if the friend understands your situation and understands that you're trying to get some traction and later you start charging, then that's fine. But make sure that's clear because uh, it can be kind of iffy for that person. So, okay, there are a couple things you could do. Uh, yeah, first of all, look into, uh, if you haven't yet, Translators Without Borders. Um, check also uh, TED Talks, I, I might have mentioned as well. And um, there are other, if, if, yeah, TED Talks. So at, at least it, it used to be, I think it's still the case, that they, they always need all their talks to be translated. And, um, but they don't pay. And so, but that's a good place to get experience because everyone knows TED Talks. So um, check with them. Uh, you know, they used to have the option to translate their talks. And, um, and, then, uh, and then I would check with, you know, local NGOs and organizations, foundations. You can just contact them out of the blue as well. Say, hey, would you like to have translation pro bono? And you, there too, you can always explain your situation. Um, you, you can say, I can, I can do your translation and uh, I've, uh, I've experienced in the legal field and I'm setting up as a translator. So I'm uh, trying to gain some experience and stuff like that. Um, it's hit or miss, but if they are interested in having something translated into Russian or what have you, then they probably won't say no to a free translation. Um, in terms of uh, leveraging it for... Now, you can also do the same on pros, by the way. When you're applying for jobs, you can even tell them. You can say, as you can see, I have no uh, ratings yet, so I can do this one translation for free, and if you're satisfied, you can give me a good rating. And many times, they'll be understanding, and, uh, and they'll accept it because they have nothing to lose, really. Uh, you know, the issue can be in the future if you want them to become uh, full-time clients, regular clients, because then you have to start charging them. But... With pros.com, I would say it's a bit uh, safer to do it than with like a local law firm you, you know who you know who can be a really good contact in the future. And um, so you can try there every now and then uh, to offer, you know, if it's a short translation, if they just need a certificate or something translated, just say, hey, look, I'll translate it for free. If you're happy, I'd really appreciate a good rating because I'm trying to build up my profile, as you can see. Um, and, uh, and same if you're registered, obviously on the other ones, translators cafe and stuff like that, you can do the same thing as well. Um, but yeah, uh, that, that's all that comes to mind right now anyway. So, uh, in terms of memberships, I'm, a, well, I, in terms of paying for membership, I'm a member of pros.com and, uh, and American Translators Association, but otherwise I try to stay in my field and that's, uh, you know, more in the financial field and stuff like that. So I'm a member of a couple um, financial organizations here in the area and stuff like that because these are the ones that are my target market and I stand out a bit more because I'm in translation and not in finance and so if you're in the legal field whatever legal associations or something you're associated with I would stay with those or uh, you know keep looking around if there's something like that because that uh, you're a good contact for them as well in the sense that they know a bunch of, of, of other lawyers, but they don't know many translators, maybe. And so it's good to be there. Uh, you won't get anything right away, but down the line, you'll, you'll be the first person that comes to mind if you're a member of these associations. Otherwise, yeah, uh, in terms of associations, membership, yeah. I mean, that's pretty much all I do. The things you have to pay for, don't. Uh, th th there are quite a few free organizations before you actually have to start paying for a bunch of stuff, you know, without seeing the return.